Hello guys and welcome to the video. When playing games, at some point sooner or later, we want to save our progress and later on continue playing the game from where we left off. And in order for us to achieve this, the game needs to have some sort of a save and load system. In this video, I will show you how to build a simple and yet reusable save and load system for your game. Now let's go into a quick walkthrough of the demo project that I have made. This is the player object and you can call him Jeff. And also Jeff can move, so if I press somewhere in the ground, he can- OH NO NO WAIT! I have made a total of 3 levels in the game, and each level has a finish line at the end, and if I go to the finish line, the next level is loaded. Also I can collect those coins throughout the levels, and the amount of the collected coins is then displayed on the top left of the screen. And also if I finish the last level, I have made it so that the first level is loaded, so that I have some kind of an infinite game. And last but not least, let me show you the actual save and load system of the game. So, it works by pressing those save and load buttons at the top right of the screen. And if I collect some coins, go to the next level, go, let's say, somewhere here. And now, I have two coins, I am on the second level. At this position, I press save. And let's say, now I want to, let's say, collect this coin, go to the next level. And then decide, oh wait, I want to load my save file. So I press load. And it works. So what I actually saved and loaded was the amount of coins that the player had. And the level that he was on, as well as the position and his rotation. And if we open the save file itself, which is just this txt file, we can see all of the information that is being saved. So we have the level index being 1, which means the second level. Because in this case, uh, counting starts from zero, the coins amount of the player, his position represented by x, y, and z coordinates, which basically is a vector tree, and also his rotation, x, y, z, and w, which is a quaternion. And the way this data is structured containing key and value pairs, it's called JSON. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation, and it's a data format that it's easy for humans to read from and write to. A JSON object starts and ends with curly braces, and inside it contains key value pairs where the keys are strings and the values can be strings, numbers, booleans, arrays, or even other JSON objects. In this example of a JSON object, we can see some information related to a game character, like his first name, last name, level, and whether he is alive or not. And in the next example, we can see that our JSON object now has a new key value pair, inventory which is an array containing other JSON objects. Now that we know what a JSON object is, let's talk about the two main processes involved when working with JSON objects. The first one is serialization, and I know that it may sound complicated and long, just like my dip, but it is actually quite simple. It just means taking a C-sharp object's properties and converting them into a JSON format. You should also know that JSON is language independent, which means that you can use it with almost any programming language. And the second process is called deserialization, which is just the opposite of serialization. It means taking the JSON data and converting it back to a data object. Now back to the demo project. This is the C-sharp object that I used to serialize when saving my game. And you can see that I have the level index, the coins amount, the player's position and rotation as well. And I think that this is the right time for me to tell you that for this demo project, I use the newtonsoft.json library when working with JSON objects. Starting from Unity 2017, the newtonsoft.json library is included in Unity and you do not have to add it externally. You should know that this library provides a set of attributes that control how the objects are serialized and deserialized. I will give you a quick example of the most used ones. By default, newtonsoft.json does not serialize private properties. Let's say that this class contains some game logic and properties that should be private and you do not want them to be public. And for example, if let's say the level index is something that you want to be private so that it cannot be accessed from external classes, but you still want to serialize this, this property, you can add this JSON property attribute and you can see it's using the, the library. And this means that no matter that this property is private, it will serialize it. 
And the other example is quite the opposite. Let's say that this property, the level index, remains public, but you do not want to serialize it. You can add the JSON, ignore property. And so this property can remain public, but it will not get serialized. Now, let's get to the coding part. This is the class that it's used when saving and loading. I deleted the bodies of the methods so that I will write them again from scratch and explain it to you how everything works. And this initialize method is from an external library that I'm using. Essentially, it's just like the unit start method. It is called only once when you start the application. So in this case, you can just use the unit start method. It's not a problem. They're doing the same thing. This JSON serializer settings field, it's used when serializing. And you can see that here in the beginning, I set the formatting to indented, which means that when I serialize a C-sharp object, the JSON string is not put on one line only. It is formatted so that it's more human readable. Now let's implement the save method. We can see that this method receives an object that needs to be saved and also destination, which is just the file path to where to save that object. You can also see that I have made the method generic, which means that you can save whatever objects you want. Now let's take that object and convert it into a JSON string. To serialize the object into a JSON string, we type in JSON convert dot serialize object. We pass in the object that we want to serialize. And also we can pass in the settings that we set up at start. Now that we have the JSON string, let's write it to a file. File dot write all text. We use the destination that was passed in and the JSON string. I should point out that this should be a file path, not a directory path. Otherwise, it will throw an exception. And if you give a file path to a file that does not exist, it would automatically create the file. But if the file exists, it would be overwritten. Now let's do the load method. First, we need to get the JSON string from the file. And now let's deserialize the JSON string into the generic type that was given when the method was called. For this to work, we need to use the deserialize object method, the generic version, where we select the generic type T so that the JSON string is deserialized into type T. And then return the object. So let's now give it a quick test. I will collect those two coins and go to the next level. Go, let's say, somewhere here. I will save. Then let's take this coin and go to the next level. So I had two coins at the moment of saving and I was on the previous level. So if I press load, we can see that it works. Thank you so much for watching guys, I hope you liked the video and by that I also mean if you have pressed the like button. So, see you in the next one.